This video will go in depth into what I think is the most powerful tool in Flash. Before I begin, I want to note that I switched from using Adobe Flash CS6 to Adobe Animate CC, which is basically the same program, only a bit smoother and a little more solid. Brush strokes and lines do a better job of keeping their shape when I draw them, and I feel like the program struggles a bit less to keep up with my sometimes extreme usage. This shouldn't have any effect on my tutorials though. So in my opinion, the most powerful tool in Flash is the symbol. To review, a symbol is a graphic, button, or movie clip that you create once, and then you can reuse it throughout your document. And any edits you make to the symbol will update in all other copies of it. However, changing the size or color effect of one copy of a symbol will only affect that copy. Without symbols, you would have to copy and paste every time you wanted another instance of an object. And if you ever wanted to change that object, you would have to change every single instance of it. Symbols keep your project organized and make it very easy to go back and make edits after you've finished your animation. So when creating a symbol, you are given three choices graphic, movie clip, or button. Even though it seems like a graphic symbol wouldn't be allowed to animate while a movie clip symbol would be, in fact you can animate a graphic symbol, and a movie clip symbol is actually not what we want in most cases, because you cannot see the symbol animate until you publish the clip. The benefit of movie clip symbols is that they are allowed to have more advanced blending modes and filters applied to them. There are a few uses of symbols that I want to discuss, and those uses are using a symbol for looping animations, using a symbol as a folder, using a symbol to hold variations, and taking advantage of nested symbols. In each different use, we will be using graphic symbols instead of movie clip or button symbols. Creating a looping animation is super easy. All it takes is converting something to a symbol by pressing F8, and adding more frames and drawings to it. When you exit the symbol and play, the symbol will cycle through the frames that you've made. Here's another example. Let's make a beating heart. First, draw a heart. Convert it to a symbol, double click it, and convert it to a symbol again. We do this so we can give it a classic tween. Press F5 a bunch of times, and then on the last frame, hit F6. Press Q, and shrink it. Then right click, and add a classic tween. Now exit the symbol, and the heart should be beating. You can use a symbol to store complex animations. Sometimes you need to create many extra layers to pull off something super complicated, but then later in the animation you don't need so many layers anymore, and it gets confusing to manage. You can select those frames, right click and hit copy frames, create a new symbol with Control F8, then right click and paste frames. Now on the main timeline you can drag your new symbol into place and delete the extra layers. In the past I've used symbols to store 50 layers at a time, and it's a good way to stay organized. Another thing you can do is use a symbol to hold variations. In Animation vs. Minecraft, I had one symbol that held every single block in it, one on each frame. This made it easy to swap blocks whenever the stick figures scrolled through their hotbar. I never had to drag in a new block and align it to the previous one. All the rotation information was retained. The key to doing this is in the Properties panel under Looping. You have three options, Loop, Play Once, and Single Frame. Loop means the animation will repeat once it reaches the final frame, play once stops at the final frame, and single frame is just a single frame. The number underneath refers to the frame of the animation that the symbol will start on or be stuck on. So in my case, I would use single frame, and every time I wanted the symbol to change, I would make a new keyframe, click the symbol, and change the number using the scroll wheel. You can use this for different faces on a simple character, different mouth shapes on a more complicated character, different leg positions for a walking character, or different hand orientations. The last thing I want to mention is nested animations. A nested animation is an animated symbol within an animated symbol. They are typically used to achieve movement that would be tricky or difficult otherwise. Here's an example, a floating buoy. We use nested animation to simulate the bobbing and swaying movement. First, we draw a buoy and make it a symbol called buoy. Then we convert it into another symbol and call it buoy underscore bob and give it a bobbing animation. Make sure to add an ease to the classic tween. Then we exit the symbol and convert that symbol into another symbol and call it buoy underscore sway. Inside the symbol we need to extend the timeline to the same length as the bob animation, that way it loops properly. You can also make it exactly twice as long, which is what we will do, so that the bob happens twice for every one time that it sways. Now the buoy moves very realistically. 
We can now take this buoy and move it across the water on the main timeline as well, if we want. There are many ways to do nested animations. This is another example of a nested animation, a bouncing, rotating tire. And here are the different animations that combine to make the final product. Rotation, bouncing, and horizontal movement. Nested animation was also used to simulate these grass clippings coming out of this lawnmower. We start with a rotation animation, take that symbol and make it fly in one direction and get smaller, then make seven copies of that animation and offset the first frame of each one by five so that they start at different times, as well as offset their angles to make them go in different directions. The result is a shower of grass clippings coming out of a lawnmower. So that's the power of symbols, and we barely scratch the surface of all the things you can do with symbols. If you want to go deeper into animating with Flash, my friends at Bloop Animation have a Flash animation course that guides you through the making of a full animation from start to finish. Link is in the description. Since I don't post videos daily like other YouTubers, there's less room for me to post random updates. So I typically use my public Facebook page to post updates in between videos. Link to that is in the description. Make sure to click like. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.